I'm Nixie Pixel, and you're watching the first ever episode of my new show, OS Alt. I will be your tour guide on our journey through the good, bad, and ugly of open source. Today we look at alternatives to the ever-popular Microsoft Windows operating system. Since the 80s, Windows have been booting up desktops, increasing productivity, powering games, helping businesses run, and creating untold numbers of crashes as well as uh, <coughs> raping our wallets. We are using Linux daily to up our productivity, so up yours. The most recent stable version is Windows 7. We like it because it enables us to run all of our software that we need for our tasks, be they for business, personal use, or gaming. Desktop software development is focused on Microsoft Windows platform, and everything else is a distant second. It has a huge mature development team of hundreds and millions of users. If you have a Windows issue, you can all but guarantee that someone, somewhere, has already seen it and solved it. Hopefully. We don't like Windows 7 so much is because it costs buku bucks, and each piece of software that runs on it also likely costs money. And not to mention that Microsoft runs validation checks on you on a constant basis. Not really too happy about that. It tends to be unstable and insecure because you have thousands of different viruses, lots of prawn with lots of viruses, and um, yeah, we'll just don't even have to talk about the blue screens of death. Chances are if you've ever had used Windows and had problems like this, it would cause you to sob while recoiling in the fetal position. And boy is it a resource hog, it takes up tons of space and the software written for Windows brings more of the same. These days 6 gigs of RAM and terabytes of hard drive space can be gobbled up quickly. Not to mention, without major tweaks to the OS, you can't really customize Windows to at least my liking that well. Our choices are pretty limited. My favorite open source alternative for those looking to switch from Microsoft Windows is a Linux distro called Linux Mint. This free OS is based on Ubuntu, which I adore, and it comes bundled with enough software to satisfy most users' needs right out of the box, or off the CD. And believe me, Mint is fast. Its resource usage is far less than Windows, and it takes up far less space on your hard drive. Now, it may be a little tough for some users to install than Windows, but once you have installed it, it's far more stable, and you'll never have to be worried about trolling your prawn again. No viruses. You don't have a multi-billion dollar corporation supporting you if things go wrong, but Linux Mint and Ubuntu communities are ginormous with teams created just to help new users with the problems they face starting out on a new operating system. And those can be rather vast. People always think of Linux operating systems as requiring use of the command line, but you don't have to type commands in if you don't have any desire to. Many users just do because some things are quicker to do this way. Software is incredibly easy to install in Linux Mint. Go to the Software Manager, pick what you want, and it will download and install for you. With a click of a single button, you can update all of the software you've installed, including the operating system itself. Now most programs that run on Mint share resources, so their installation sizes are super small, saving all that precious hard drive space for your data. While I think Mint looks great when you first install it, the options for customization go way beyond what you can do with Windows, if you desire to change it, of course. The real negatives to switching to a Linux-based OS are the lack of specialized software and current games. Because Linux holds so little of the desktop market share, around 1-2%, to 2 few software developers write programs to run on it. Um, so where Linux Mint is behind is the access to high-end applications such as multimedia productions, computer-aided design, and of course the latest games, sad face. In many cases, open source alternatives exist to do some of the same things, but they can be very lacking in terms of features and maturity. Overall, I give Mint a 4 to 5 stars as an alternative for Windows. For the majority of casual computer users who just want to do the run-of-the-mill stuff like surf the web, watch videos, check email, and play some web-based games, using social media, Linux Mint is perfect for that. What prevents me from switching over completely is the lack of support for the latest games and specialized software, such as video editing. If you want to try it but are worried about giving up Windows, do what I do. Install Mint side-by-side -side with Windows, giving you an option at boot on what you want to use. 
The latest version of Linux Mint is 12, codenamed Lisa, and you can download it for free here. Leave a comment below of what you'd like to see on my new show for a chance to win a Crash Plan Plus membership. Crash Plan lets you automatically back up your hard drive to another computer. The version you'll get, Crash Plan Plus, offers secure cloud storage in addition to local backups and continuous minute by minute backups. You know what they say you gotta back up, then back up your backup, then back up again. I'll announce the winner in next week's episode of OS All. Talk to you later. Great. Uh, oops, sorry, mister.